know this isn't close enough. And I was really inspired because on television we're seeing so many different people of color on so many awesome shows. And it's so cool that our community has the ability to kind of okay. make new content and tell their own stories. And that's why I'm so inspired by all of you. So um, the first question that I want to know is how has your race or ethnicity played a role in your content? And do you think that that's helped you connect with your audiences? that we have, no one really knew about it. 
So I did I did my part, and, and, and even when I do a lot of my videos, I try to incorporate a lot of my culture as well. I speak a lot of Punjabi in my videos. Um, you know, I, I just try to I try to kind of get that point across, and like, hey, you can be proud of who you are, and not be scared to be who you are. Because I know a lot of people had a lot of fear looking like this in a post 9/11 world. I did certainly as well. But you know, it's like, no, this, we can change. You know, this is a different time now. We, we have the power, we have the tools to change uh, the media's perception of, of who we are, and uh, that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing. So, shout out to my Punjabi. I'm having like all the feels right now. <laughs>
most educated about. And when I do speak about these issues, um, like, like I, I don't consider myself an activist. I'm just like a comedian and, or a YouTuber that's like just not afraid to speak up on certain issues. And these, I don't really consider it a moral. It's kind of a moral obligation, but also just a natural response. Like, I just tweet what's on my mind, and Twitter says it literally just says what's on your mind. If I get on, I log on, and there's a new video every other day now of a black person getting shot up, choked out. That's gonna be on my mind. Like, I'm more worried for the. Thank you. I'm more worried about the people who are seeing that and then are able to like ignore it and be like, okay, guys, it's time for a following spree. Retweet for uh, for a follow.
beers, a lot of Sikhs have beers, a lot of Hindus have beers. It's just in our culture to have beers. It's it's in the Middle Eastern culture and it's in South Asian culture to have beers. It's like a very respectful and powerful thing to have a beer. But that's never shown in like mainstream media, and that's what like pisses me off the most. Cause I'm like, you, sh you show like 20 like they're hot, hot white guys. Yeah, they're good looking, but, but like they're not changing the standard. They're not changing. Why not like you know show different different people as well? Like Asian, I never see Asian beers. I want to see. Asian kid and 
feeling embarrassed about like my native language or feeling like I, if my mom called, I'd have to like get really quiet on the phone because I didn't want my friends to make fun of me because it sounded funny. But then like you know, I realized like man, this is like this is where I come from. Like this is my culture. Like I shouldn't be ashamed of this, you know. So now in my videos, I make sure that these kids like hear me like speaking Thai and being proud of it and not being like having to hide because I'm afraid of what people are gonna think, you know. So they feel like oh, you know what? He's not afraid to like embrace. His culture and his language, like you know, me, let me not be afraid either. You know, that's what I'm saying. That's, that was me. For, for me, like it's, it's the same top, like the same thing. Like I'm one of the only guys I think with a turban that's been in, in, the, in the mainstream, or not even mainstream, but I mean on the YouTube platform or the internet platform. So there's a lot of uh, responsibility in that sense. But I try to have fun, like whatever I'm doing. So the thing is, like a lot of people in my community that are more traditional might not understand what I'm doing. So I'll get a lot of feedback. From You have to be a good boy, man. You have all these kids watching you all the time. You have to be good, man. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm doing good stuff. But I'm like, this is comedy for me. You know, I like to, like, bring, going back to the first point that I was saying, I want people, I want to normalize this image. That's that's my main point because it's been such a negative image, and I want to normalize it, and I want people to not be afraid of it. I want people to not question it because I've been in public places. I go to public places. I see how people look at me. I see it, like when I walk in a restaurant. I see how people act and get fidgety or the comments that are thrown my way. I, I've been getting my whole life. So I don't want people to be scared of something because that's where that hatred stems from. So if I normalize this image, if I show people, I'm like, yo, this guy's funny. Yo, this guy can do this. This guy can do this. And he's just like a regular dude doing this, except he has a turban and a beard. People can identify with that and be like, that's so cool, man. Like, I, I didn't know. I had no idea. And I, when I get those type of comments, I'm like, yes, it's another win for my people and another L for all the racists. And so that's what I enjoy the most. And even building on his, his uh, Tim's, Tim's point, like little things like speaking Punjabi more is one thing that I, I like to do. Pronouncing things correctly, like my name. I used to pronounce, I was scared. My name is Jasmine. And a lot of people say Jasmine because that's how it's spelled in English. So when I was growing up, I used to tell people to call me Jazz because I was embarrassed of my name. And I was like, meat, and then they're gonna make, oh, meat jokes, and I don't know, you know, dirty minds. So it's like, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. I was Jazz, but recently, because of YouTube and because of this, like, you know, empowering other people to, to, or you know, I just, get, I guess, just like open up, opening up people's minds to, to this image. I began to say my name like how it's supposed to be said, and I'm like, it's not that hard to say. It's just and then meet, and I'm like, that's that's not too hard to say. So when I introduce myself to people, I don't introduce myself as jazz or jazz meet anymore. I introduce myself as just or just meet. So little things like that. Like I'm like, we should be proud. You should be proud of your name, and you should be proud to to say those names. Because if, if they can say stuff like. Marco Angelo and, and you know, all yeah. the other random names. And Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right, Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you can say all these names, and you can say my name properly too. Like, it's not a stress, it's not that hard. So, yeah, like, names is another thing. Be proud of your name and pronounce, the way, pronounce your name the way it's supposed to be said. I think you don't have to change it for anybody else. Just, just, be, just be proud of them. So, with my content, it's a little bit different. Um, I upload uh, fitness videos and cooking videos.
I'm kind of a mix of everyone. Like with her, I feel as though I'm myself. When I make my videos, I'm representing myself. I feel like people see me, they know I'm black. They hear me talk about Big Sean, they know I'm gay. Like I don't need to make it the main focus of what I'm doing. And I think it's like part of the problem that we even have to feel pressure to represent an entire thing because there's not enough of us out there. And I think that it's sad. Very, very sad. Yeah, it's definitely the power of being able to be seen as an individual, and there's something about that that is definitely um, expands people's minds in terms of you know seeing you just as one person and not like every other black person. And like no one else has to worry about that. Exactly. Um, oh wait, real quick, real quick, just going off of what yeah. you're saying. Um, I, I also like when you were saying, do you feel like you, you kind of represent yourself for people who have never seen like uh, people of you know that look like us? Um, I remember thinking like, you know, because when I was growing up, all my friends, you know, I just, I, we were all like really diverse, right? And But I remember seeing like Asian guys and just like thinking that like, all of them that I see on TV are really shy and you know, really quiet and never talk to girls. And like, I remember, like, I'm like, I remember thinking like, that's, that's not me, you know? So I wanted to make sure and, and rep and show people like in, the, in America that like not all Asian guys are super shy. So a lot of, I, I catch a little flack for having like dirty videos and having like dirty content but like I want to make sure people see that like hey Asian guys like you know we're like we're sexual people too you know so I you know like I talk about like PBs and vaginas on my channel because I, I think it's important yeah give it up for PBs and vaginas because I, I feel that you know and even all the really popular Asian guys now on YouTube I feel like no one no one goes there you know and I kind of and I get comments where it's like whoa like um, you know of course most of the comments are what you gonna do with your little uh, little Asian dick you know but it's still
I'm going to work with this person, but they did this thing that doesn't really align with my values or isn't something that I really agree with. Like, does that change who you work with? I, I think it would change for me. Like, I, unless they like man up and, and not man up, woman will mind up too. But I mean, like, unless they like own up to their actions, I, I don't. I don't think I would. I would. I would work with them on that on that basis yet. Like, I mean, it's not cool to get away with certain things. So. You know, you should you should take responsibility for the things you say. As long as I, it's all about intention. Like if someone's intention is 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 pure, then like it's not cool. It's, it's no problem. But I mean, if their intention was to, to deliberately hurt someone or to hurt a group of people. I don't know. I have to disagree on that. Right? Yeah. I think I always use the analogy like if you step on someone's toe, even if it's an accident, like you still hurt the person's toe. Right. So if it's so an accident, I, mean, I, yeah, I yeah. do think that you're people right, can right. unintentionally do and say things that are really harmful. Um, but I think. worth questioning. Yeah. Uh, I feel you on that. And I have definitely turned down script ideas from people where it's like, oh, it's like, oh, it's like a little dick joke. And I'm like, Plah. you know what? I'm like, I've kind of like, I've been, this kind of goes against everything I've been trying to build for me and like my people, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm like, yeah, okay, I get what you're doing, but I, I'm, I'm very picky about what I do in terms of like, like race for for me because like uh, like I, I will rarely do like an Asian accent you know just because I kind of feel like a lot of that stuff for like from for my people it's just kinda, it's it's all they see you know what I'm saying so it's like I don't want to just always go back to that because a lot of times you know like especially with Vine you know like they want the quick laugh so it's like sometimes it's easy to get the joke that everyone to do the joke that everyone knows already you know so but I definitely like well I mean I don't work with a lot of people. Because I don't find a lot of people funny, but uh, <laughs> <That's it. laughs> I've worked with Kingsley and I've worked with Just Rain, though, and I'll work with you guys, and I'll work with you. So hey, cool crew. Let's all work together. <laughs> campaign. We've seen banner ads, TV commercials, billboards with some of uh, some huge YouTube creators. Well, but with the, the, really the exception of Michelle Vaughn, we really haven't seen that much diversity. So um, besides yourselves, who are some people of color that you would like to see featured in upcoming YouTube campaigns? And hopefully we can tweet YouTube so that we can maybe get some of them featured. Everyone on the stage, my name. <laughs> Like they have a lot of commercial appeal, and they have like a Wait, lot. But why of aren't we commercial? I don't know. Saying, like, the thing is, we can appeal you're, to you're, lots of different people too. No, I know. Allowing them to to get higher places because you're giving them these platforms, as opposed to like if you were to give someone that was, was of a color the same platform, like in downtown Toronto, okay, like right in Dundas Square during uh, uh, the YouTube Fan Fest, there was a huge poster of a of a of a girl YouTuber. She's cool. She's dope. But like, you know what I mean? Like it was like there's so many YouTube. Like there's myself, there's Lily, there's. I was uh, gonna say Lily would have been. Lily, she's like, oh, she's killing me. My choice, and she's huge. Yeah, no, and she's and, and, huge. Yeah, and there's so many people. There's a lot of people from Toronto. So if you're gonna put up a poster, and the weekend's poster actually was on there right before that during Fan Fest, it should probably be someone um, from Toronto and probably someone of color. Like you know, you know what I mean? Like so, but eh, I, yeah. Well, especially since like I mean. And, Super big audiences. Like I kind of understand like why they wouldn't choose me. Like my stuff is dirty. You don't want to put that on billboard. Like um, or YouTubers that are coming up. But then like I think of like Ryan Higa, who's like been doing it and has consistent, yeah. <laughs> has crazy views. Has been consistent since like 06. And like I never. His content been. appeals to a huge Everybody. audience yeah. of people. I don't know. Hey Ryan. Ryan would be nice. Just ring cracks me up. Yeah. 
Tim, Tim, I used to watch Tim when I first started YouTube. That's just crazy. And then I made my favorite ever video with one of my favorite YouTubers, which is really cool. So. Oh, if you haven't seen the video that me and Jess made, I don't want to plug it right now. It's so funny though. It's, it's so good. See, that's that's. I don't want to plug it, but I'm just gonna plug it. I say a plug, but it's a plug. That's that's another example of like that. That video had nothing to do with race. It's just a funny ass video, just really random, and like it cracks me up still. I'll go back and watch. It's one of my favorites. And that's like that, that's another example of like you don't always have to talk about race. You can just be yourself. You can you can have comedy. You can have humor. And then when people see a person of color doing those things, they can identify themselves. With. So that's that's important as well. You don't have to always talk about race, but but make sure that there is a certain sense of responsibility. But also do the fun stuff as well because either way you're still gonna be putting on for your people. So yeah, that's what I believe. I'm the same way as Tim. Uh, how you mentioned, like I would never expect myself to be the face of anything because I'm a mess. But like Trey Melvin, for instance, he does like so much, like a broad, he's intelligent, he does like social commentary, he does skits and everything. You just like, there's a whole bunch of people that are there. And I actually had a discussion with someone else because they were like, I was said to them, I'm like, I feel like YouTube forgets that black people watch YouTube. You know what I mean? And they were like, what do you mean? Like, who is on YouTube that's black? I'm like, what do you mean who's on YouTube that's black? There's so many people on YouTube that are black, you just aren't seeing them because they're not visible. All right, so make sure to definitely keep tweeting us with hashtag represent VidCon. We've got a lot of really good questions on here. Um, this one comes from Patrick Kieser. They want to know what can be done to make YouTube a more diverse place. Um, I'd say go, going back to that point of like, like highlighting certain YouTubers is a is a big thing that they can do. Like right on the homepage, if you can put up like a key advertisement, why not put like a certain YouTuber that that comes from like a specific background or bring something different to the mix and and feature them. You know what I mean? Like have like a week-long feature, like a day-long feature of a certain YouTuber or a certain bunch of YouTubers so that people that go onto the site that may not have, like, have come across this YouTuber in any other way have a chance to do that. So I think that's that's one of those things that, that YouTube can do. And also, like, all this print media and billboards and all the stuff that they're doing. Um, put, the, put the colored folks on, too. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. They had that before, right? Like a feature thing? Like, I mean, they used to, and then they, I think they took it off. I don't know why they would do that, but I was about to say the same thing. Like, just trying to get us out here. Like I personally, when I whenever I find like a really good uh, YouTuber that's a person of color, I try to like get them out there because it's rare. Uh, well, I mean, no, it's not rare that there are good YouTubers, person of people of color. I'm saying it's rare that we're out there. So I try to, I just try to do my best with that. But I don't know, man. Like it's we don't. Just someone else go. <laughs> feature content, you know, it used to be like, the featured videos, like, if you got featured, it was like, oh my god, I'm on, YouTube just put me on, I mean, that's how a lot of people found Kev Jumbo, he was like, he was featured, you know, now I feel like, not only for, uh, for like, a diverse group of YouTubers, just, but just for any YouTuber, it's kind of hard to, uh, to get an audience as a new YouTuber, just because of the way things are set up, that's a completely different conversation, though, but, yeah, alright. <laughs> yeah, you know how at the beginning you were like, um, helps you, and I think it was the same for like Wong Fu Productions, Nika Higa, I mean Nika Higa is still super huge and I love his videos, but I feel like recently we've hit some sort of a glass ceiling uh, for Asians on YouTube, it's really weird, it's almost the same glass ceiling that is in Hollywood and entertainment, and yes I would love to say keep working hard, doing it for the, do everything and it'll come your way, and, and that's completely true, but it's just become a lot harder. So again, having that same YouTube homepage that I used to really love would be what they said. <laughs> it's a good point because it used to be so much more like uh, user oriented. Like you would go on the front page of YouTube and it was all faces. It was all faces of creators and like everything they did. And now you go on it's like Vivo and celebrities and like just stuff that doesn't really show what YouTube was and the community that is a part of it. And so it's hard for people just in general, um, but especially for minorities to find new people and people they can relate with because the same people are in rotation all the time. Yeah. Um, all right, here's another question from Amanda. So should Caucasians not be proud of their race? Um, and, and I 
definitely want to jump on this first, if possible, because I definitely don't think that that's what people should take away from this panel, um, especially because I don't believe in any way, shape, or form we've tried to make white people. Actually, Caucasians are not specifically just white, P.S. There are people of color that are from the Caucasus region. Look that up. Um, but I, this is a question that I see a lot when we talk about people of color having pride in their background and in their race. And I think there's a large misunderstanding in the fact that there's a difference between the fact that white has always been shown as the standard and that everything else that's not white has always been discriminated against or stereotyped and that's everywhere when we look at our media, when you look at magazines, um, and we really haven't had an opportunity to present ourselves in authentic ways. Um, and so I definitely want to make sure that no one in our audience thinks that this is in some way saying that white people are bad or that you can't be proud of who you are, but I think it's important to understand there's a really big difference in having pride for your ethnic heritage as, as a, an act of defiance because we've always been told there's something wrong with being black or there's something wrong with being Indian or Muslim or Asian um, that white people have not had historically, especially in this country. So I definitely want to make sure that I add that perspective. But if you guys want to jump in as white people, like, it's like it's a F you to the system. Like, I'm not just proud to be black, I'm proud to be black in a world that tells me I shouldn't be proud. Woo! I should be put down. We're just trying to get up there, thank you. Yeah, I think there's a reason, you know, there's a reason why this panel isn't just about race, it's about race and representation. It's about us using YouTube as a tool, especially to, you know, represent ourselves and, and where we're from. Like, there was a guy that was mad on my Instagram comments when I posted the, the flyer for this, because he was like, dude, where, where's, the, the, where's the white people on the panel? Like, um, like, we, we, like, we should, why can't we be represented? Yeah, know? I saw a few of those comments, <laughs> yeah, actually. On and I'm like, they're on every other thing. speak on it, you know, and he's like, and he's like, are you saying, he's like, if you're saying that um, ethnicities aren't represented as much on TV and in the media as white people, I disagree, and I was like, what? I was like, are you serious? Yeah, you can look around at the panels here, and that's, and that's not a criticism, I think that sometimes it's like a blind spot in the sense that I've had lots of projects that I've worked on, and I said, and, and it's for lots of different backgrounds, and I said, hey, it'd be really cool if we could get a gay person in this sketch or in this piece, or just a person of color. And I think a lot of times people are so used to seeing people that look like them that they're just not thinking about it. And we can even see it in a lot of the panels that we've had here where there's been, you know, they talked about it a few years ago where we had panels where it was all men and it was just like all white dudes and there was like not one female representation there. And I think that we have to be really conscious about that when it comes to people of color too, to just sprinkle us in there <laughs> as much as possible because it, it, it adds a level of authenticity and also representation that can really expand people's minds. Like we're here, you know what I mean? Like, and, and women of color, more women of color. Yes, more women of color. Not only are they facing the race issue, but then they have to face the gender issue as well. So more power to all the women. Man. Intersectionality. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so just to build on, like, I think it's just some people don't realize, like, it's not, it hasn't been, like, for me, race is, like, people will always question me sometimes, like, why do you talk about race so much? I'm like, I, like, I haven't, like, this has been on my mind all the time. It's your daily lived experience. It's my daily experience. Growing up, it was my daily experience. People used to see me, question me all the time, say stuff to me or whatever. Like, it was a daily thing that happened to me all the time. That's why I'm so open and free to talk about race, because it's something that's always been on my mind. And, you know, with, with people of, uh, like, with white, I guess, kids that were growing up in my school, it wasn't really a big thing for them, because they had a lot of people that looked like them when they were growing up. So it's not like... They they weren't always questioned about what kind of food they ate, what the language they spoke, what kind of clothes they wore, what their parents looked like, where they, what country they came from. It was, these things were never an issue for them, whereas for me, it was an issue every single day. So it's like, that's what I have to say. Like when, 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 Even when the campaign of, of uh, Black Lives Matter uh, came up, there was, everyone was like, what about All Lives Matter? It's like, no, we're not saying that all lives don't matter. It's just Black Lives Matter right now. This is an issue that we need to talk about. Focus. Black community is, is 
under a lot of heat and within the states. And then you have the brown man who's like the, the external enemy is what I always say. Like, if you want to pin something against uh, someone else or like, that's our, that, that's the country that's our enemy. It's always a brown country, you know what I mean? So it's like, blacks are like the internal enemy and, and browns are like the external enemy. And, and you even see that when you see shootings happen, right? Like uh, um, Oak Creek uh, was a couple years ago. That's when someone walked into a Sikh temple, which is, which is what I am, and they shot and killed nine people. And he was labeled as a, as, he was like, oh, he's mentally ill. And then, he wasn't labeled a terrorist. He wasn't labeled a terrorist. How's that not terrorism? You went in, and he, and the, the worst thing was he thought they were Muslims. So that's two groups of people that you clearly were racist against and, and, and were like, there's so much hatred for that. So he went into a Sikh temple, shot them because he thought they were Muslims. And the media, A, didn't do a good job of identifying with, okay, so this is the Sikh community, this is the Punjabi community, this is where they're from. No, it was all about the shooter. It was all about how he was when he was growing up. It was all about these little issues. And and that's like, it, it shows in our media. When a black shooter kills someone, it's a thug, it's a gangster. When a brown guy does it, he's a terrorist. When a white guy does it, oh, it's a, it's a, it's he's a, a loner. Yeah. Let's talk to all of his and friends. And even, even now, people are like, he's a terrorist. And people are like, wait, 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 don't. Hold on. Let's, let's I mean, really, is he really a terrorist? Dad? Let's go to his childhood. He was so happy. Here's some pictures of him smiling. Here's like, you know, meet people, you do interviews with their friends. Like, oh, he's a happy guy. He wouldn't have heard a fly. But it's like, you paint these guys in these lights, but they'll never, never do that with people of color. Never. You will never know about a person's background, how they grew up, how they were that. Nothing. It was just like, oh, he's a terrorist. He killed this many people. Even, They're even bad. most recently with Charleston, we have not heard anything about the victims or their families or where they grew up. But we've seen baby pictures of Dylan Roof. We've yeah. had interviews with his parents. Um, and so I think that if you're not, if you're not conscious of these things, it's hard to see it, you know? And, and I think that that's why this panel is specifically about representation. Because, like you said, if you're used to seeing yourself everywhere, then in your mind, it's like, well, why do we need this? I'm fine, I see myself everywhere. But for us, we're not seeing ourselves everywhere. And unfortunately, when we do see ourselves so often, it's these really limited stereotypes. So that's why I'm so excited to be on a panel with all of you, and you are all doing these really creative things and really representing ourselves in, in interesting and authentic ways. Um, here's another question from Isabel Z. How do you feel about the idea of being colorblind? All right, so um, well, I got something about this. I used to think the same thing uh, before you realize, like, the world, we're all human. It's good to treat people as humans personal, on a personal level, but you got to realize that the world doesn't treat us all in the same way. You know what I mean? Not everyone gets is treated equally, and you got if you don't see that, if you're going to just be like, oh, I don't see that you're black, I was like, all right, I'm black, all right, just like, you can see that, I'm okay with that, because you got to recognize that, like, I'm going through different things than you, and if you just want to ignore that, I feel like... That's just, why are you trying to ignore my pain? <laughs> yeah, no, I feel, uh, that's right. I feel like, I, I, yes. <laughs> I feel like it's, yes. <laughs> I feel like it's too easy to say, I, I don't see color, right? I don't see like a difference. Cause it's like, we're, we're different, you know? Like, like different's not bad. And different is not bad. The key is embracing the different. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of times people say that thinking it means I won't treat you differently. of those differences. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You, it's, it's all about uh, understanding where someone's coming from, but we're all on the same level. Like you said, we're all human beings, and we're all working here to get cool things done. And if you're not adding positivity to the world, that's my whole thing. Everything has to be about positivity. If you're not doing that, then you just need to get out of here, or when you get educated. Extremely well. Well, yeah. And then you look like I'm from I'm from Ferguson. Like that's where I grew up, strong in school. And I went back and like drove through and it's just like a disaster. <laughs> and so when you have somebody that's like ill, ill, <laughs> um that like has a life that's very, very privileged and they don't really see what everyone else in the world is going through and they forget that because of the 
like the level they've gotten to. And so it's like, oh great, you know, there's no racism, there's no color, we should all be just happy. You can't like have that type of platform and put that out there because there's other people that are still like struggling every day. Like even with Sandra, like just every day and you can't forget things like that. And I just feel like when you say things like colorblind, as happy as you want to be in like the world you want to live in, it's just not reality. And you should like face that stuff head on and be like proud of who you are and like fight for other people like you and to make sure that that like the problem is visible. So yeah, you brought up a really good point. But not everyone has the luxury of being able to say that they don't see race or that they're colorblind because for those of us that are people of color, we don't get that option. People see us the way that we are all the time. And I thought this was a really important question from Tiffany Rodriguez. Being Hispanic, I see no real representation of the Hispanic community on YouTube. Why is this happening and how can we change it? And I saw a few comments about just even on this panel and, and I'm thankful that people brought this up. And even as I'm sitting here, I'm trying to think, who can I think of that's in like the big top creators that's Hispanic, Latino? Dulce Candy. Oh, Dulce Candy? Yeah. yeah. Um, one of my best friends, this guy named Super Ego, he's like really popular among the Mexicans. <laughs> um, we could have had Blame VidCon, it's VidCon's fault. Blame VidCon, blame Francesca. Uh, <laughs> I didn't pick who was on the panel, so don't blame Francesca at all. Um, I'm trying to find more questions. Oh, here's a good one. This one's from Kavita. I hope I'm saying her, this person's name right. right. Um, what do you guys think of using comedy itself as a tool to combat racism, for example, satire? And that's something that I see you guys doing a lot of. Can I go first? Yeah, sure. I think that's like, this is a craft that I'm trying to work on. I'm 18 right now and I hope I can like figure this out within the next couple of years. But the balance between like fun stuff and um, uh, social awareness is crucial. Like if you come off as preachy or if you're just talking about these problems, then um, people will get turned off. They don't really want to hear about it. But if you're able to use comedy, for example, like Chris Rock is able to do this. Um, there's a lot of comedians that do it, but satire and comedy, if you're able to fuse the two, you're able to expose injustices that people don't see. You make people think in a different kind of way, and it's really interesting um, just thing that I really would like to, I'm, I'm doing it right now, I'm, I'm, I'm here, okay. So like, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job so far, um, but hopefully with the next, I just, thank you. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> Satire, like that's what I try to do too, and it's tough, man, because sometimes it just goes over people's heads, you know, and it's like they don't understand it, and they're like, "This is racist." Like I did a video with my friend Rick where we, uh, it's like, uh, it's like you're a stereotype when you're hungry, and then, uh, and then he was like saying, he was like, he was hungry, so he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna go rob some white people, and I'm gonna eat some chicken," and then like he bit the Snickers, and then he wasn't a stereotype anymore, but it was supposed to be like highlighting the fact that these are stereotypes, you know what I'm saying? But people watched it and were like. I'm like, no, these, these are stereo, I say these are stereotypes, and at the end I'm like, oh, me so hungry, because I'm hungry too, you know, and I'm the stereotype, but sometimes people just, they don't, it can't, it, 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 they don't get it, and it's tough, comedy is tough. Okay, so here's my question to kind of piggyback on that, because I see a lot of times people using stereotypes under the guise of satire without actually making a comment about why that's wrong, you know, and just recently, Amy Schumer kind of got in some hot water for some comments that she had made about Mexicans. And she kind of used the idea that she was commenting on people being stupid and racist. And I was thinking that there was a disconnect in the fact that just saying something racist or just saying a stereotype isn't enough. Um, because, you know, someone can just watch it and then think that that's the stereotype and that it's true, rather than actually commenting on it and why it's wrong. So, you know, I think that that's really important to remember that satire is not just saying the terrible thing. There has to be some level of commenting. Otherwise, I always think to myself, if it's like a full proud racist saw this, would they enjoy this? Or would they think that they are being made fun of? Or would they just agree with it? You know, and there's a really fine line there. 
we've got a few minutes left, and I think that this is a really good question to end on. It's from Emily. She says, how can those of us who are not minority draw attention to race issues without hindering the cause? Uh, well, yeah, like, I think, I think just be, like, joining in, like, having solidar solidarity with those that, that are speaking about these issues, whether it be, like, I mean, working alongside with them, um, creating content with them, or if, if a certain uh, YouTuber or, or an online personality speaks up about a certain issue, you should acknowledge it or, or just kind of chime in a little bit. And, and like, uh, one of the things that I saw on your Twitter, which is really funny, was I forgot who it was, it was like a popular Viner. And I was like, oh, I'm so, I'm so mad at people being, uh, you, you tell the story, you know the story better. Dude, I don't want to do this right now, please. All right, All right. we'll tell the story. <laughs> Like people need to understand that there's certain privileges that other people get, and, and if you if you kind of join in with with someone who's speaking with a struggling voice, I think that goes a long way in terms of kind of uh, um, bringing light or shedding light to that to a specific topic. Yeah, just like make sure you're not speaking over a certain group, um, but for, you can just like read like some people just don't say anything, but you could retweet uh, people of color. For example, like with feminism, I, I don't speak as much about it because I want actual women to actually speak about it, and I will retweet them, and I want their experiences to be told. So, I feel like you can do the same thing with um, racial issues. If you don't feel comfortable, if you don't, you can just educate yourself. Like, we have the internet. Like, you got so many options on how you can figure out things. Just try to get educated, and then educate other white people if you can. <laughs> Francesca for killing the moderation. 